Hey everyone, welcome back to JRAM Kids Online. Today is episode four, and we are so glad you are back here to join us. So before we start, we do have a few announcements. Number one, first of all, thank you so much for posting videos of your children saying memory verses. So if you guys aren't up to date, we have been posting references of the memory verse that we say every single week. And we encourage parents to take videos of their children saying the memory verses so that we can all be encouraged of seeing children memorize the word of God. This week we'll have a new one. So if you guys are wanting to, feel free to take a video of your child saying that memory verse and post it in next week's post. Number two, we do have weekday lessons. So I'm not sure if you guys have been keeping up, but every single Monday we do have a new lesson. We have three in fact, and you can do them throughout the whole week. Um, they are created by one of our pastors and they worked hard on creating worksheets and linking as well video lessons for that coordinate with the worksheets. So if you guys are looking to learn more about Jesus throughout the week and not just on Sundays, then please feel free to check those lessons out. We post a new one every single Monday and sometimes we do have a craft included. So if you guys want to post a video or a photo of your craft, then please feel free to do so. We'll have separate posts for those as well. And lastly, if you want your children to be featured in our JRAM Kids Online episodes, then please feel free to give me a message. We love seeing the kids join us in worship or close in prayer. And I'm sure the other kids love to see their friends on screen since they can't see them often anymore. But if you guys are urged to do so, just give me a message and I am more than happy to include them in our episodes. Anyways, so before we start, let's remember the three rules that we have. Number one, please put away any distractions. Number two, please grab your Bibles. And number three, please participate. So without further ado, let us worship our living God and follow along as Kuya Gian leads us in worship. Are you guys ready to do some praise and worship? Amen. So before we start, I have to teach you guys the steps. It goes like, He's the one who makes the sun shine. He's the one who put the moon in the sky. He's the one who hung the stars one by one. And the rest is really simple. So just follow me along, okay? the sun shine he's the one who puts the moon in the sky he's the one who hung the stars one by one he's the one who makes the birds sing he's the one who makes your dreams so high He's the one who makes me smile Day by day, Jesus, you're my superhero You're my star, my best friend Jesus, you're my superhero You're my star, my best friend Yeah, 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 yeah Better than Superman Spider-Man Yeah, 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 yeah Better than Batman Yeah, 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 yeah Better than anyone Jesus, you're my superhero You're my star
Hey kids, how's everyone doing? My name is Pastor Joel and I'm so excited to be with you this morning to teach you more about the Word of God and about Jesus. Are you guys excited? Can I hear you guys say, yeah, let's go. All right, today's passage is about a man named Lazarus. All right, so now open your Bibles with me to John 11, verses 1 to 44. Parents, if this would be a perfect time to help your kids find their Bibles or open their Bibles to the right passage, John 11, verses 1 to 44. I know that it's very long, kids. There's 44 verses. That's a lot. So what I'm going to do for you guys is summarize it, but I hope and encourage you guys to at least open your Bibles there because I will be referencing or I will be saying a few verses, okay? Cool? All right, cool. So part of God's story today is about how Jesus brought a man back to life. Whoa, that is crazy, right? So Jesus had three really good friends and their names were Mary, Martha, and their brother named Lazarus. One day, Lazarus got really, really sick. He got so sick, he was aching. He was so sick that it looked like he was about to die. Oh no, Mary and Martha knew that the only person that could heal Lazarus was who? Jesus, right? So what they did was they sent someone to find Jesus wherever he was. And when that person found Jesus traveling, they saw him telling people about God. Now, you might think that Jesus would rush to heal his friend Lazarus, right? But instead of leaving right away, Jesus stayed where he was for another two days. See, Jesus knew something that no one else knew. Jesus was going to bring Lazarus back to life. Whoa, that's crazy. So they could believe that Jesus was really the son of the living God, okay? When Jesus finally got to Lazarus' house, Unfortunately, Lazarus was dead. And he was, it said in the Bible that he was dead for four days. Four days. Mary and Martha during this time was heartbroken. Can you imagine? They were sad, right? Martha said, one of the sisters said, Martha, she said to Jesus, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And then Jesus replied to her and said to Martha, Martha, don't worry, your brother will rise again. When Martha heard this statement, she did not understand. See, at first, but what Jesus meant when she when he said that was that he was actually going to bring Lazarus back to life here on earth. Jesus said to her, if you guys now look at your Bibles in John 11, verses 25 to verses 26, this is what Jesus said to Martha. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So Jesus was saying, because he's the son of God, that he is more powerful than death. Do you guys believe that? That Jesus is powerful? If you do, can you say that with me? That Jesus is powerful. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus is powerful. All right. Okay, so Jesus is powerful. Now, after that, Martha's sister, which was Mary, Mary then ran to Jesus' feet and fell at his feet, worship, right? Mary was crying and she said, Lord, Lord, she was crying. She's like, Lord, Lord, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. See, when Jesus saw her crying, he was so sad. In fact, when Jesus came to the tomb where Lazarus was buried, he cried too. Can you imagine that? Jesus cried too. He had emotions. He was really sad. His friend whom he loved so much had died. Kids, have you ever felt sad because of something that happened to you or something you really cared about? I remember one of my friends when we were biking when we were younger. We were biking uh, along in our park and all of a sudden my friend fell and he scraped his knee and it really hurt and he was crying, he was in so much pain. And I felt so sad because my friend was hurt. Can you relate to that? See, just like us, Jesus felt pain and sadness because of what happened to his friend Lazarus. But the next part of the story gets very interesting because Jesus told some people to roll away the stone to roll away the heavy and big stone. This is not necessarily a stone, but it's pretty heavy. So can you imagine a big and heavy stone that was humongous? And he told the people to move it because he was gonna do something miraculous, okay? So 
This is the interesting part. It's said in the Bible, if you look at verses 41, that Jesus looked up, he went to the tomb, he started walking to the tomb, he looked up and prayed. And he said, Father, I know that you always hear me. Then he called out in a loud voice. And kids, I want you to say this with me. Lazarus, Lazarus, come out very loudly, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And that's what Jesus said right in front of the tomb. See, during the scene, he went into the tomb, it was empty. And he said, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And then all of a sudden, Lazarus came walking out. Whoa! This man who had been dead for four days was now standing in front of everyone, walking, jumping, talking. He's alive. He is alive. This is crazy, right? The people around him were amazed. You see, Jesus knew all along that he could bring Lazarus back to life. Jesus wanted people to see who he was, the son of the living God. Jesus wanted to see God's greatness and that God can do anything, even bring back somebody from the dead. Can I get an amen for that? Amen, right? And Jesus was about to do something even more incredible. He himself was about to die on a cross, be buried for three days, and then come back to life. Do you know why he did this? Jesus died on the cross for our behalf so that he could rescue us from our pain, from our sadness, from our wrong choices, from our sin, and ultimately because he wanted to be in relationship with us. Jesus says that if we believe in him, we get to be part of God's family forever. That's a great promise, right kids? And that's the story of Lazarus. I hope you guys learned something. Now, what can we learn and what lessons can we take away from the story of Lazarus? All right, kids, so what can we learn from the story of Lazarus? Number one, Jesus has feelings too. See, Jesus knew that Lazarus was gonna die, but he still cried with Mary and Martha, knowing that he lost his good friend. It shows that Jesus loves us so much that he cares for us when we are in pain, when we're hurting, and when we're broken. Jesus also said that he wouldn't leave us there, but that he would help us and give us comfort, give us love, give us peace, and give us joy in the times of, you know, when we're hurting or in the times of suffering. So always remember that Jesus cares about you, he cares what you're going through, and that, you know, it's okay to be sad, but always know that joy is from the Lord and he will give that to you so that we can overcome any obstacle that we're going through. All right, now what's number two? Jesus turns bad into good. See, Jesus knew that Lazarus died, but he wanted to use this situation to show people and to bring glory to the Father. He wanted to show people that he was truly the son of the living God and that he was powerful, even powerful over death, right? And so in the same way, have you ever felt a moment where you thought that you wanted things to happen, but it didn't go the way that you desired? Well, sometimes God can use those situations to turn sad and broken moments into really good and happy moments. For example, the COVID-19, I was super sad because yes, I was at home, I didn't get to see my friends, I didn't get to see do a lot of things, but God taught me that I could spend time with my family, that I can join new, learning new things such as working on cars and like a lot of things that I enjoy, that I thought that you know during this time that I would be bored. But God has showed me so much of his love and his grace and he used this bad situation for the good. All right, and number three is believe in Jesus. Again, believe in Jesus. It says in John 11 verses 25 to 26, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So one of the uh, things that Jesus is encouraging us with this story is that to believe in his power and to believe in his authority over our lives. Sometimes there are moments where we think that it's really impossible for God to move and for God to see our situation because it's really messy or that sometimes we think it's impossible. But one of the things that God promises is that if we believe in him, he can do great and mighty works. Even with Lazarus, Jesus was telling Martha that, hey, just believe in me and you will see miracles happen. And so in the same way, all that Jesus is asking for us is to believe in him, believe in what he has done in the cross, 
and believe that by Him that we can have victory over anything, only if we have Him on our side. All right, so let's summarize what we have learned. The first point is that Jesus has feelings too. He loves us so much that he even empathizes. He cares for us when we are hurting and broken. Number two is that Jesus turns the bad into good. Even though we think that we're hopeless or that things are not gonna get better, Jesus can turn around for his glory and His for his good so that we can have peace, joy, and comfort. The last one is that we need to believe, Jesus calls us to believe in Him. Jesus calls us to believe in what He has done and that He can defeat death and that we can have eternal life with Him and that we we should believe that God can do the impossible and move in ways that we cannot expect. So there you go kids, I hope you guys learned something, I hope that you can share that with your friends and I hope that you guys are blessed, okay? I'll see you guys soon. And now for our activity. Number one, what is another word for coming back to life? A, die, B, resurrection, C, sick, or D, asleep? It's B, resurrection. Number two, what are the names of Lazarus' sisters? A, Mary and Elizabeth, B, Elizabeth and Anna, C, Martha and Elsa, or D, Mary and Martha? That's right, D, Mary and Martha. Number three, What did Jesus do when he found out that Lazarus died? A. Jesus prayed B. Jesus wept C. Jesus knelt Or D. Jesus sang You got it! B. Jesus wept Number 4. How long was Lazarus dead for? A. Two days B. Three days C. Four days Or D. One week It's C. Four days And number five, what was one of the points we learned today? A. Jesus is powerful B. Jesus has feelings too C. Jesus is our superhero, or D, Jesus heals the sick. That's correct, B, Jesus has feelings too. Awesome job everybody in the activity today. So before we end, let's remember a memory verse together. So today it comes from John 11, verse 25 to 26. If you guys are paying attention, Pastor Joel did mention a part of it. So it goes like this. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So if you guys are wanting to, please remember that we will be posting the first reference online in a few days from now so that you guys could post your videos of your children saying them. So be excited for that and we hope to see you there. And now to close us in prayer, here's one of the children. Let us pray. Jesus, we praise and honor you and we love you. Jesus, we are sorry for all the bad things things that we have done. Please forgive us and heal our land. In this time of COVID-19, we pray when we aren't sure. Jesus, help us be calm. Jesus, help us to reach out and touch with our hands, our families, church, and friends because we already miss them so much. We pray for the government, pastors, doctors, nurses, policemen, janitors, 
caregivers and all of the people who are working and not working for good, health and safety, and for those who are sick and those who are sad and for the all of the people who are affected with coronavirus all around the world. Jesus, thank you for your goodness and mercy and for the opportunity to be available to hear your word and learn from it. And that, that lesson we learned, we will be safe in our hearts. Jesus, in past of fear, you are our strength, our savior, and an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear and knowing that perfect love cast out of fear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.